Hi, good morning. Um, welcome to Baptiste Power Yoga Fayetteville. I'm Shelly Simmons, um, owner and teacher. And I want to take you through a 60 to 65 minute Baptiste Power Yoga flow this morning. We call it Journey into Power. And today I'm gonna focus a little more on um, proper form and alignment. I'm gonna go maybe a little slower. So we're not gonna take all the repetitions that we might normally take in a regular um, class. Um, because I'm going to slow it down. I really uh, always hesitate when people ask me if I have a beginner's class. I don't like uh, to um, encourage people to only take a class that's slow. I think that you have it in your body to take like a full um, Baptiste flow right from the beginning, honoring what you need to do and taking breaks when you need. But I do also appreciate that sometimes seeing the breakdown of the poses and a little bit more explanation can be helpful. So that is my goal for today. Uh, and you can come back to this again and again uh, if you are newer or just want a reminder about alignment uh, or anything like that. So let's get going. I'm gonna to practice today with a block. Uh, if you don't have one, that's okay. Everything we're gonna do can be done without the block. But if you have a block, go ahead and grab it. If you have two blocks, you might want two blocks. So uh, I'm just gonna use one today though. I'm gonna set it by the side. And I'm gonna take a sip of water to start. I also do hope that you have some kind of water or electrolyte handy with you and my towel. So, let's get everything out of the way here. I start in child's pose. So, my uh, knees are wide on the mat and my toes are together. I'm just going to let my body drape down in between my legs. And there's no right or wrong stance for where my knees are. My big toes are touching, but they don't have to be. So, just sink down into your hips. And right here is about presencing yourself on the mat. So just taking a few deep full body breaths and really getting present on your mat at the beginning of class. So a lot of times people refer to um, the physical practice of yoga as a moving meditation, and it can be that. So um, one way that it is a moving meditation for a lot of people is to really focus on breath and on gaze, drishti. So right away, in your child's pose, fire up your breathing, breathing in and out through your nostrils, deep, full body breaths, inhale, and then exhaling through your nostrils. Ujjayi breath, building an inner fire. Inhale, exhale, with deep, full body breathing. Fill up and empty. Keep practicing that full body breath with the uh, mouth closed, in and out through your nostrils, the ujjayi breathing, the whole practice. Of course, if you need to open your mouth and take a breath or two, or pause and take a break, do that when your body needs. So we're not gonna stop today to take water, but anytime you feel overwhelmed, just come back to child's pose, grab a drink of water or electrolytes, whatever you've got with you, and take a break and then just pick up wherever we are. So, I also spoke to Drishti to gaze. So even looking down at your mat, open your eyes and see what you see right at your mat. Setting your gaze as a way to keep you fully present right here in your experience. Breathe in and out. Inhale, exhale. Come up to downward facing dog, press into your hands and feet. I'm going to lift my toes and spread them out. Let them be light. You can set them back down or you can keep them lifted. My sit bones are reaching up to the ceiling and I have a long spine. I'm going to keep that ujjayi breath and my drishti point now. I'm looking between my feet and then I'm going to add in Uddiyana Bandha, the belly lock lifting my belly button up toward my spine and really tacking it there. 
for the whole class. Inhale, exhale. Practicing with a strong core. Breathe in, breathe out. Sink your heels to the back of the mat. They won't touch, but you just kind of want to lengthen the back of your legs. But don't lock out your knees. You can have a softness in your knees, around your joints. Breathe in, breathe out. Walk to the top of your mat. Walking your feet up to your hands, hip width. You can keep your hands on the mat or grab opposite elbow with opposite hand. This is what it looks like from the front. It's really letting your head dangle to the mat, lifting your hips high up toward the ceiling. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lots of reminders to breathe every time I teach. Set your hands to the mat, toe heel your feet together, roll up through your vertebrae, reach your hands overhead. This is extended mountain. Check in with the front of your body. You want your front body, your belly is lifted, your rib, front ribs are knit together. Breathe in, breathe out, hands to heart center. We're going to start class with one ohm. Inhale. This warms up the central nervous system. Ah. Inhale. Lift your fingertips up to the ceiling. Exhale. Fold forward. Hands can come through heart center. Halfway lift. Halfway lift, my uh, hands can be on my thighs. Just a gentle touch here, and I have a long spine. I want the crown of my head to the front of the room, and I'm looking down so that my spine is long all the way through the back of my neck out to the crown of my head. Halfway lift can be here as well. You can see I still have that long spine and the long neck, almost like I'm holding like a grapefruit under my chin. Come to high plank. Keep that long spine, belly is lifted. My shoulders are over my wrists. So this isn't it, and this is the high plank. You want to come shoulders over wrists, core is engaged. I'm tucking the front of my pelvis up and my, sending my tailbone back toward my heels. You can always take this on your knees. And then low plank from your feet to rock forward, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. We can spend a whole class on uh, chaturanga, on low plank. So today I just want you to find it in your body, that rocking forward, either on, bent, on your knees or from your toes. And uh, another time we'll have a fuller session on it. Three breaths. Reconnecting with your breath, with your gaze, right here from Dan Bob. We will move faster, I promise. Inhale, exhale, walk or jump forward, feet to hands, halfway lift, fold, extended mountain, rise up, fingers reaching energetically through to the ceiling, like I'm stretching through my fingertips. Hands through heart center, fold. Halfway lift, hands to the mat, high plank. I'm gonna demo from my feet now. I'm pulling my shoulder blades together on my back, lifting my belly up. Then I'll rock forward. Wrists are uh, right underneath my elbows now. Upper facing dog. This can be down on your legs, or you can press into the tops of your feet and energetically lift your thighs off the mat, and then roll over your toes, downward facing dog. From down dog through extended mountain, and then coming back down to down dog, that's a sun salutation A, so let's take two more. Moving a little faster now. Breathe in, breathe out. 
fill up, empty, walk or jump forward, toes to touch, halfway lift, fold, extend a mountain, inhale, exhale, fold forward, halfway lift, chaturanga, right to low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, four breaths, building heat, tapas in the body, through breath, through our gaze, through the belly lock, our foundation strong, pressing down strongly into the mat, lifting our belly up, one more inhale, exhale, look forward, walk or jump, halfway lift, fold, rise up, extended mountain, fold, keep your belly lifted, halfway lift, Hands to the mat, right to low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. We're now going to move to sun salutation Bs. So it's going to start in down dog again. Take a deep breath in. Clear it. Lift your muscles, your leg muscles up. Power through your leg muscles. So lift your thighs up off your knees. Squeeze muscle to bone. Inhale. Exhale. Walk or jump, top of the mat. Halfway lift. Fold. Bend your knees, thunderbolt. We also call this Utkatasana as the Sanskrit name for thunderbolt. You can see why it's called a thunderbolt. We're in the shape. You want to take your knees back over your ankles and your hips down and back to the back of the mat. Reach your fingers up energetically, then hands to your heart center, fold. Halfway lift, hands to the mat, high plank to low, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Warrior one, right foot forward, big step with the right foot, back foot, Flat on the mat, my toes are at about 10 o'clock, my front toes at 12 o'clock, facing the front of the room. I'm gonna sink between my feet, lift my arms up, both my shoulders are facing the front of the room. Inhale, exhale, take a few breaths to find it in your body. Breathe in, breathe out, look at one spot, let your face be soft. Another breath here, fill up. Hands to the mat, send that leg back, chaturanga, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, left foot, warrior one. Same thing here, left foot faces at 12 o'clock, back toes at about one or two. You wanna think about steering your left hip back or right hip forward, keeping your core engaged so my belly is lifted, front ribs knit together. Lift your hands up. Sink your hips low. Breathe in. Hands to the mat. Send the left leg back. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Come to your knees. I just want to take a moment to present that we do do a lot of the high plank to low plank. Uh, and that can be a lot for people when they first start yoga. You always have the option to just come to down dog. So after your warrior one and warrior two, just come back to down dog. Uh, so I encourage you to do what you need to do in your body as you build strength. And I also really encourage you to take um, both high plank and low plank on your knees to build the upper body strength that you need to then eventually take it on your feet. So. Downward facing dog. We'll do two more sun salutation Bs. Inhale, let it go. Walk or jump forward. Halfway lift, fold, thunderbolt. Inhale, sink your hips low. Reach your fingers up. Hands to heart center. Fold forward, let your head dangle. 
halfway lift, hands wide, low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, warrior one, right foot forward, come up. We're moving quicker now, so just reach up, take one breath in, then hands right back to the mat, flow right back down to your low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, left foot, warrior one, come up, find the pose in your body, breathe in, hands to the mat, breathe out, low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, three breaths. When we come back to down dog, it's a good time to check in again with your belly. Make sure it's lifted, that Uddiyama Bandha. Check in with your breath. Keep breathing. Exhale. Walk or jump forward. Toes to touch. Halfway lift. Fold. Thunderbolt. Find the pose and then fold. Halfway lift. Hands to the mat, low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right foot, warrior one. One breath, inhale and come up. Exhale, hands to the mat, go right back down through your vinyasa, which is low plank, up dog, down dog. Then left foot forward for warrior one, bend your knee, in the warriors, you want your knee bent to 90 degrees. or moving toward 90 degrees. You want your knee out towards your pinky toe so you're not collapsed in. So, hands to the mat. Back to down, or back to low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Come to your knees. We're going to take a hip opener now. Actually, you can take it on the knee or you can take it from down dog. So from down dog, let me presence that first. Lift your right leg, bend your knee. You're going to let your heel on that lifted leg just drop toward your bum and you're going to peel open so your hips are shining to the right side of the room. Head is just dangling to the mat and I'm gazing under my right armpit. You can take this on the knee as well. If you take it on the knee, I like to come to a forearm so I still get a good stretch. Both hands are on the mat. Downward facing dog, we'll take that on the other side. So from down dog, lift your left leg up, straight leg first, and then bend your knee, dropping your heel toward your bum. You're gonna peel your hips open to your left, the left side of the room now. Really pressing down into the foot on the mat in both your hands. Stay in here to get a stretch. Or taking it on your knee, coming to an elbow. Downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward. Crescent lunge, so my back heel is staying lifted. Different than in warrior one and warrior two, where our back foot is flat on the floor. You can see I've got my heel stacked right over my toes on, that, on my left foot, the back foot. My front knee is reaching toward 90 degrees, and I'm pushing my kneecap out toward my pinky toe so I'm not collapsed into center line. But I've got a nice wide base. Hands to heart center. We'll take a gentle twist to the right. You can stay up here. Really keeping your core engaged, or you can come down, hooking your elbow on the outside of your right leg, but keep pressing that knee out into your arm and press your arm back into the knee. Just twist open so the twist is coming from the rib cage. Strong legs. Breathe in. Breathe out. Twist. One more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Twist. And then we're going to come up to warrior two. I'm going to drop my back foot on the mat. Razor edge parallel with the back edge of my mat. Sink your hips down. Knee out toward 90 degrees. 
This time, both my shoulders are facing the left wall, but I'm gonna gaze over my front fingertips. Warrior two. Breathe in, breathe out. Gaze over your front fingers, let your face be soft. Maybe the hint of a smile. And then drop your right elbow to your right thigh, extend inside angle. Keep reaching your front knee to 90 degrees. Left hand reaches up to the ceiling. Core is engaged. One more breath here, inhale. Then look down, hands to the mat. Set the right foot back, low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Feet wide at the back of your mat, so hip width like you're on uh, train tracks. Step your left hip forward, left foot forward this time for crescent lunge. Again, my back heel is lifted. And think not only about sucking your belly in and up, but think about lifting the front of your pelvis up and letting your tailbone drop toward the mat. Really finding that core engagement even down those low transverse abdominals. Hands can come to heart center. We're going to take a twist to the left this time, pressing your hands together, staying up high if that's better in your body. Otherwise, keeping a long spine, hooking your right elbow on the outside of your left knee. One more breath here. On an inhale, you're going to come up, dropping the back foot parallel with the back edge of your mat. Rebend your front knee if it opened up or you came out of that. And we're going to gaze over our front fingertips. Shoulders are facing the right side of the room. I've got my shoulders stacked right over my hips. Three breaths. Extended side angle. Just mimicking what we did on the other side. This is a gentle touch of my elbow on my thigh. I'm not dumping down, but I'm keeping a long spine. You can see I have a long line from my foot, my back foot, right foot on the uh, mat, all the way to the crown of my head. Look up at your hand or straight ahead. Whatever is better on your neck. Then hands to the mat through your vinyasa, or straight to down dog. Five breaths. Coming to child's pose as needed, and taking water. Otherwise, in down dog, lift your hips up, send your heels to the back of the room. Let your toes be light. Two more breaths. Your head just dangles to the mat. And then walk or jump forward. Halfway lift. My toes are touching again now. Fold. Thunderbolt. We're going to take a twist and thunderbolt. So hands to heart center. Twist to the right. I want a presence that in thunderbolt, my legs are fused together. A lot of people mistakenly think that having their legs further apart is better for their back, but the common default here is that your knees will buckle in trying to do that. You see how even if I start here, the longer I stay, my knees will start to buckle in, and that's actually a lot more pressure on my low back than if I put my feet together. Really have strong legs as if I have one strong pillar, I'm squeezing my legs together. Much easier on my low back. Twist to the left, right. Again, you can stay up or hook your elbow. Gaze to the side of the room or up over your right shoulder. Fold forward. Split your feet to hip width. Take your peace fingers, the front first two fingers. Grab the uh, inside of your big toe. Halfway lift and then fold. So sideways, it's gonna look like this. My feet are hip width. Then a halfway lift, even with that 
spine, grabbing my toes, and then just let my head dangle to the mat. Bend your knees as much as you need to to find torso to thigh connection. A lot of people mistakenly think that straight legs is an important thing in yoga, but I really never straighten my legs. I always have at least a soft bend in my knees. Release your hands. We're going to come right back up to Thunderbolt and take a twist to the left. Again, staying up higher. That's better for your body. My legs are together. Or hooking my elbow. Pressing my palms together energetically. One more breath here. Inhale. Exhale, fold forward again. We're going to take gorilla. I'm going to split my feet to hip width. I'm going to take my hands, palms up, all the way under the soles of my feet. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Again, bending your knees as much as you need to. Rock your head, yes. Shake it, no. Making sure your neck is loose. Your head is just dangling off your neck and shoulders like a coconut. Release your hands. Malasana, yogi squat. So if I were facing forward, my heels would be on the mat, but my toes would be off. I'm taking a wide yogi squat, letting my sits bones reach to the uh, mat, the crown of my head up toward the ceiling. Pressing my hands together, pushing my knees out with my um, upper arms. So from the side, I'll show you what this looks like. Option if you're more experienced to take crow here, but we're not going to practice that today. Again, ankles are off my mat, toes are, or ankles are on my mat, toes are off. But your stance may be even all the way off the mat. So you can see my sit bones are reaching down to the mat, and then I want to have as long a spine as possible. Crown of the head reaching up to the ceiling. I'm going to come out of that. I'm going to take a forward fold. Toe heeling my feet back together. Halfway lift. And then, actually, we're going to come all the way up to standing right now. Rolling up one vertebrae at a time. Standing poses are next. What we call the uh, equanimity series, which is all about balance. And finding that equanimity uh, in our body, the ease, the balance between ease and effort in these standing poses. So, two tricks in standing poses, um, three tricks. Breath, keep, keep breathing, find one drishti point to set your eyes to, and then really keep your core engaged. So, eagle from extended mountain, I'm going to wrap my right arm underneath my left, my palms come together, and then I'm going to come to like thunderbolt, not like thunderbolt, I'm going to kind of thunderbolt through my legs and wrap my right leg over my left. If this is not attainable for you right now, or if this bothers your shoulders, you can take your hands to your shoulders, opposite hand to opposite shoulder, keep your elbows lifted out. And you can see I have a long spine, and my shoulders are stacked right over my hips. I'm really using core to keep my uh, posture aligned. Come out. Other side. Left arm under, left leg over. If the arms are attainable but the legs are hard, you can keep your legs next to each other and just lift your right heel up. So, maybe we can stay more from this side. My left, my right foot is, sorry, your left heel up. My right foot is flat on the mat, and I'm lifting my left heel up so that most of the weight is in my right leg. So I have a little weight in my toes for the ball of my foot here. And release. One more time, each side. I'm gonna do it facing forward this time. Right arm wraps underneath left, and then I'll turn sideways and then right leg over, and release, other side, left arm under, left leg over, come out, 
and back up to standing, Tadasana, Mountain Pose. In Mountain Pose, our hands are by our side, our belly is lifted, the front of your pelvis is lifted up, your tailbone is reaching gently to the, uh, towards your heels or the mat. From here, we're gonna take hands to heart center, and do standing, a version of standing leg like raise. So, now squeeze your right knee in, and then take it to 90 degrees. I am holding onto my knee here, helping to support my leg in this pose. I'm gonna open my leg out to the right, and I'm gonna gaze to the left. If taking your gaze across is too much to stay at gazing forward. Come back to center, lift your arms up, Kick your leg out, and I'm going to send that leg back for airplane. Palms are face down, fingertips are reaching toward the back of the room. Back heel is lifted. Here's a modified version. Just tapping the toe as you need to on the mat for stability. Hands to heart center, come back up to standing. We're going to take that on the other side now. Squeeze your left knee in, take it to 90 degrees, open out. Keep your gaze forward or arm and gaze, walk over to the right. You want a long line from your standing heel all the way through the crown of your head. Come back to center, arms up, take the leg back, airplane. Keep your, both your hips facing down at your mat by spinning your um, lifted pinky toe down toward the mat that helps square up your hips. Hands to heart center and come up to standing. Tree pose. Take your right foot up on your left leg. It can be up high like this, up on my inner left thigh, and you notice that even I, after almost 15 years of yoga, still reach down, grab my ankle, and pull it up here. So you're not expected to just lift it all the way up and set it down. Um, variations include just a kickstand leg, so my toes are still on the mat. The sole of my right foot is up against my right ankle. Or you can bring it up a little bit higher or a little bit higher or all the way up. Whatever's working in your body today. You want a really strong standing leg, hands at heart center. Three breaths. Finding that core engagement, pressing your hands together. And release. Other side, left foot up wherever it wants to be. This is tree, and I'm still getting great core work here and a nice hip opener. This is a lot of work. I really feel it in my booty. Peel your leg open, even if you're in kickstand. Taking that left knee out to the left. One more breath, and come down. Come back to the front of your mat, lift your hands up, extended mountain, fold forward, halfway lift, low plank, step your legs back, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, ha. Take a deep breath in through your nose, and then open your mouth, sigh, ha. Again, inhale, ha. Step your right foot forward, warrior one. Coming right up, warrior one, you'll remember, hips are facing the front, shoulders are facing the front. Then we're gonna open out to warrior two. Slight adjustment in my back foot, so it's parallel to the back edge of my mat. Reaching my knee up toward my pinky toe on my right front leg. 
triangle. Straighten your front leg, reach forward, cocking your left hip, left hip back, and then come down to a block, tall block on the outside of your ankle, front ankle, or it can be by the side of your shin, your calf, or if you don't have a block, fingertips can just come to your leg wherever it reaches. I just added a, that little softness behind my right knee so my leg is not locked out. Come up to standing, side facing, wide leg forward fold. I move my block so you can see my feet. All 10 toes are now facing to the left side of the room. I'm gonna reach up and fold forward, hands through heart center, and then to the mat. You wanna reach your hips forward so they come more in line with your ankles and your, the crown of your head reaches toward the mat. Hands under your shoulders. Keep pulling the crown of your head down to the mat. Keeping your core engaged to create space. Inhale, halfway lift, and then hands to your waist all the way up. Pyramid, step your right foot forward, turn your toes back to the front, and then the back foot steps in, kind of like a mini warrior stance. I have about two to three feet between um, my right heel and my left heel. Fingers up reaching to the ceiling, and then hinge forward over your front leg. Keep your legs engaged. I'm lifting, squeezing my quad muscles, pulling them up off my knees. Upper body is soft, just head dangling to the mat. Halfway lift, and then send the right leg back. Chaturanga or low plank, upward facing dog, down facing dog. Left foot forward. We're gonna take that whole series, triangle series on the other side now. So warrior one, find it in your body, and then we're gonna open up warrior two. Readjust my back foot so it's parallel with the back edge of my mat. For triangle, I'll straighten my front leg, keeping a soft bend behind my left knee. Reach my left fingertips forward and then come down to my leg or ideally to a block. You can see that my hands are right across from each other. So they're in line with my shoulders. I'm not like one hand is way forward and one hand is back. The lifted right hand is straight up over my shoulder, left hand on my leg. And then twist the rib cage. Bottom ribs underneath you, top ribs up and back. Come up to standing, spin your toes facing the right side of the room this time. So all 10 toes are facing the right. A little bit pigeon toed or straight ahead, not open out to the sides. Fold forward. Come up to a halfway lift. I'm gonna grab my big toes with my peace fingers here. And then I'm gonna fold forward with my bound toes. I can bend my elbows and pull my torso down. Core engagement is key, creating space in your fold here. Lift your belly in and up, and then fold forward as much as you can. Release your toes, halfway lift, hands at your hips, all the way up. Spin your left toes back, 12 o'clock at the front of the room. My left, I'm sorry, my right heel steps in, squaring up my hips to the front, hands up, Fold, pyramid. Hands just drop on either side of my front leg. Really press into your feet here. The balls of your feet, the, the heels, 
Find all four corners of your feet. Lift your toes up. Let them be light. Halfway lift. Send your left leg back. High plank to low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Ha. Deep breath in. Another side. Ha. Reset here. Checking with your breath. Checking with your belly. Where are you? Set your gaze to one spot. Be right here on your mat. Letting go of any other thoughts. Come to high plank. Lower down onto your belly. One cheek to the mat. Just let your body surrender to gravity. We're going to take locusts. So my legs are straight back behind me. My ankles are about hip width. I'm going to take chin to center. I'm going to press into my pelvic bone and lift everything else up off the mat. Heels are up. My chest is lifted. I'm lifting my ribs off the mat as much as I can. Lifting my heels and thighs off the mat if possible. And then coming all the way down. One breath in. One breath out. Ha. Locust again. So spin your palms face down. Lift everything up. You're really pressing out your pelvic bone. You can pad up your pelvic bone here if this is uncomfortable by rolling your mat up a little bit or putting some extra padding with towels or a blanket. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back to the mat, cheek to one side. Floor bow, bend your knees. Grab your ankles or the tops of your feet on the outside of your ankles. Kick into your hands and come up. So this is called floor bow. You can see we're in the shape of a bow. And I'm really pressing my pelvic bone into the mat and lifting up through my chest, lifting my legs up. And come down. Release your legs long on the mat. Take your hands by your rib cage and press up. Downward face, or sorry, up, upward facing dog. Roll over your toes, downward facing dog. Come to your knees and then roll onto your back for bridge pose. My feet are hip width right um, as close to my bum as I can get my heels. So I usually at least can touch the back of my heels, um, if not grab them all the way. My hands just next to you on your palms down, hands next to you. Let your upper body just be heavy into the mat and lift your hips up. And as you lift your hips up, you keep that core engagement. So you're pulling, pressing your belly button down to the spine even as you keep lifting your hips up. And you want this to look like a plank. You don't want to be bowed out. This is what I don't want to see, is your whole front of your body open, your rib cage is splayed open so that you've got a rounded belly to your knees. I want to see a plank from your breastbone all the way to your knees. So really Squeeze those abdominals together. Lift the front of your pelvis up. Send your uh, tailbone toward the back of your knees. And then slowly come down, rolling through each vertebrae. We'll take that two more times. Go to a neutral pelvis. Reset your feet. If they've splayed open or gotten wide on you, you want them just hip width. So that's about two fists in between your hands. Come on up. Hands can be flat on either side of the mat, or you can grab them underneath you, like uh, interlace your fingers. If I do that, I'm gonna really gonna rock on the outside edges of my shoulder blades so that I've got space under my cervical spine, under my neck, and I'm not crunching on my vertebrae. Release your bind, come down. 
roll in through your vertebrae. One breath in, reset your feet, exhale, inhale, come up. Last bridge, find the core connection, really press down through your feet, fire up your leg muscles. Five, four, three, two, one, roll down. Supta Baddha Konasana, or Butterfly Pose. Feet on the mat, soles together, knees out wide. I'm going to take one hand on my belly, one hand on my heart space. I can really feel the rise and fall of my breath underneath my fingertips. Feeling all that good energy that is coursing through my body. Keep your eyes open, gaze at one spot on your ceiling. Let your whole face be soft. Find that deep ujjayi breath, even here in this restorative pose. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, exhale. Bring your knees back together, hug your knees in. Then take the outside edges of your feet or grab hold of your shins here if your feet are not accessible to you. Pull your knees down towards your armpits while leaving your whole back flat on the mat. Flex your toes wherever you are so your feet are straight up toward the ceiling as if you're going to stamp your footprint right up on your ceiling. Option to rock a little side to side. Come back to stillness. A little core work now. Lift your legs up. Both heels straight over your hips. I'm going to drop my left foot to the mat. My knee is bent. My right foot is going to come to a hover. And I'm going to take my hands behind my head for crunches. Ten. Lift your shoulders and chest off the mat. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch legs. Left, right foot is down now, left foot's at a hover. My core is engaged, my head is lifted, my neck, back of my neck is soft. Hands are supporting my head. Crunch. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, knees in. I'm going to put my feet back on the mat. I'm going to take my right foot over my left, hands behind my head again, and I'm going to crunch up and across toward my right leg and back down. I'm never bringing my chest and shoulders all the way back to the mat, or my shoulder blades all the way back to the mat, but keeping that core engagement. Ten, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to come down and switch my legs. Left ankle to the outside of my right thigh. Hands behind my head. I'm going to crunch up and to the left. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Hug your knees in. One more ab exercise. Well, two more, really. I'm going to take my legs up. I'm going to pad my uh, sits bones and my hips by taking my hands underneath my sits bones to help keep my back long on the mat. Flex your feet and then reach them 30% forward toward the front of the room. Squeeze your legs. Lower them another 30%. Lift your head and chest. Look at your feet. Lower them to a hover. Keep your chest lifted, looking at your toes all the way up. One more time. Lower down 30%. Belly is pulled down to the spine. Lower another 30%. Lift your head and chest up. Lower to a hover. Squeeze your abdominals down. Lift your feet up. High in. Rock and roll to flat feet. I'm going to keep my hands underneath my thighs, or on the backs of my thighs. 
And I'm gonna rock using momentum along the length of my spine. One, three times. Two, this time I'm gonna stay up, boat pose, balancing on my six bones, long spine. I can keep supporting my legs here. Keep engaging your belly even as you hold on, or if you want a balance challenge, let go. Arms reach to the front of the room. Long spine. Optional final vinyasa. Rock forward or come straight to down dog. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Ha. Lift your right leg up behind you. Let's get some stretching in. Step it forward. I'm going to come onto my thigh all the way to my six bones. If your hip does not want to hit the mat, take a pillow or your block and pop it underneath. Now, the main thing and how this is half pigeon is you want your thigh along the right side of your mat parallel so your knee is not out or your hip is not out. You want your long thigh parallel to the right edge of your mat. Find a long spine, inhale, exhale, and come forward. Maybe to your forearms, maybe all the way down, and your hands come forward. You can adjust that block to where it's comfortable underneath your hip. We're gonna stay here for a full five breaths. My back foot is flat on the mat, toes reaching directly behind me, or I want to flex my toes so that my foot is in flexion at the back of my mat, my left foot. I'm going to keep my core engaged and breathe. And then inhale, walk your hands back towards your legs and come up. I'll switch the block to the other side as needed. To come to the other side, I can just swing my left leg around and set my right leg back. Or you can come through down dog and switch legs. So again, now I have my left quad thigh parallel with the left side of my mat. My back toes are straight behind me. Inhale, lengthen. Use that block if your hip is not hitting the mat. And then come forward to your forearms. You can use a block here for your head to rest your head. This is the beginning of hip openers. We carry a lot of tension in our hip. For most of us. These are big workhorse muscles. They are really supporting us and carrying us around all day. They can be really tight for a lot of people. Slowly sitting up on an inhale. Moving a block out of your way if you're using it. Now we're going to take double pigeon. I'm going to face you to show you better. So I'm going to wrap my right leg that was behind me around on top. I want my right ankle bone on the outside of my left thigh. My feet are flexed forward. Both my hips are on the mat. Sometimes I rock back and forth and with my hands I grab out the flesh there and pull it out so that I really feel rooted into the mat. You can push, press your hands behind you and this may be enough of a stretch for you but, or if you can you walk your hands around forward and fold to your own degree. Keep flexing your toes back towards your knees for joint safety. Slowly come up, 
We'll switch legs. I'm gonna take the right leg underneath, the left leg on top. Again, my left ankle is on the outside of my right thigh, and my feet are flexed back toward my knees. Sit the bones on the mat. Press your fingertips. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see this better. For some of you, this may be the stretch right here, walking your hands on like cupcake hands or spider fingers up toward your bum, keeping a long spine. So it goes on the mat and finding the stretch there. Or if you're more flexible, you bring your hands around to the front and fold. Keep lifting your core to create space. Lift your belly in and up. And notice how you're able to fold forward more when you do that. Crown of the head reaches for the mat. Inhale and come up. Lengthen your legs out in front. We're going to take a seated forward fold, one leg at a time. I'm going to keep my right leg long and I'm going to take my left foot in as if a tree leg. So I've got my sole of my left foot against my right leg. Shoulders are facing forward. Lift your hands up and then fold forward. Letting your hands rest on either side of your front leg. Just letting gravity pull your torso, your upper body down towards your leg. Slowly coming up. Switch legs. Left leg is long, sole of my right foot is up by my right thigh. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward, hands on either side of, the, of your left leg. Slowly coming up, we're going to straighten both legs out in front, sits bones on the mat, inhale, reach your fingers to the ceiling, exhale, fold for, forward, first with a long spine and then letting your torso round forward, seated forward fold. It's okay for your knees to be slightly bent here. A little softness in the back of the legs like I spoke about earlier is always a good thing. See how that changes the stretch for you if you give yourself a little softness in the back of your knees. And sit up. I'm gonna roll onto my back for our final few poses today. If you have a block, we're gonna use it now for waterfall. I'm going to take the block. I'm going to take my next to me. I'm going to first kind of get into a bridge position. So my heels are by my rear again. I'm going to lift my hips up. I'm going to set the block right underneath my sits bones. Now, a lot of times in classes when people first do this, they jam the block way underneath their spine. And that does not feel very good. It's like digging right into one of my vertebrae. I want the block right underneath my hips and my bum. So supporting my sacrum, my low, yeah, my sacrum and my six bones, and I have a nice curve, natural curve of my spine. Palms can be face up or face down. I'm gonna lift my legs up over my hips for waterfall. My core is still engaged here, helping to support my legs right over my hips. I'm flexing my feet so my toes are reaching back toward my face. You may have a little softness in your knees, that's fine. We've talked about that a couple times. Straight legs, 
Bring up the bowl. Keep pressing your belly down. Pulling your toes down towards your face. Your whole upper body is just heavy into the mat. Feel the mat underneath your shoulders, the back of your head, your arms, your hands. So that your upper body sink into the mat and the floor. This is an inversion, which is really great for your lymphatic system, your circulatory system, helping to bring toxins to your digestive system more quickly than they would on their own come. They would eventually reach your digestive system, but through inversions, you're really flushing your lymph nodes, getting those toxins to your digestive system much quicker. Leaving your legs, feeling more energized. Ridding your body of that unnecessary waste and toxins. To come out of it, bend your knees, set one foot down and then the other. Lift your hips up, slide the block out from underneath you. One final twist, left leg long on the mat. I'm gonna squeeze my right leg in, and then I'm gonna take it across my torso to the left, just letting it dangle wherever it wants to land there, getting a good stretch across my, the whole uh, right hip and right glutes. I've got my right arm long on the mat, and I'm gazing toward the right. My whole upper body is heavy on the mat still, just like in waterfall. Hug your right knee back into your chest. Send the right leg down your mat. Squeeze your left knee in. Take it across to the right. Both shoulders heavy on the mat, gaze to the left. Abdominal twists are a great way to wring the toxins out of our vital organs. Our spleen, our liver, our kidneys, just rinsing them right here. back to center, squeeze both knees into your chest, and then take your legs back to Supta Baddha Konasana. We've been here before, that butterfly pose, feet are on the mat, soles are together, knees out wide, both hands on your torso. Close your eyes now. A couple of breaths here. Winding down our practice we get to our final resting pose. Let's get there now, Shavasana. Hands by your side, palms face up, legs outstretched. You're kind of in a, like the beginning of your snowman pose from when you were, or a snow angel pose from when you were a little kid and you would make snow angels in the snow or maybe in the sand. My palms are face up, my arms are long. Just letting my whole body just surrender to gravity right here. Close your eyes. Let your breath return to normal, not having to think about it anymore. And through closed eyes, gaze to the center of your forehead. See what you see there. Shades of gray soft colors, soften all the muscles in your face, relax anywhere you can think to relax, relax your chest, your belly, your legs, let your whole body sink into the mat, into the floor beneath you.
giving yourself these last few minutes of presence right here on your mat. We rarely take time in our busy lives for stillness. Give yourself the gift of stillness right now. Slowly and gently, wiggle your fingers and your toes, and then bend your knees and roll to your right side in a fetal position. A symbol of new beginning, a rebirth. In yoga, we move from child's pose, from awakening, integration, vitality, equanimity, grounding, these are the names of all the sequences we go through, finally reaching corpse pose, deep rest, and then we turn to our side as a symbol of new beginning, a chance to begin again, to start your day fresh, to begin from right here, letting go of anything that's happened in your day so far. Push yourself up to a seat at the front of your mat, Keeping your eyes closed, legs crossed. Hands come to heart center right at your chest. Press your palms together, Anjali Mudra. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Ah. We'll seal class with one ohm. Breathe in, prepare to ohm. Take a deep breath in and let's fold forward and together say namaste. Great job, yogis. So write and let me know if you have any questions. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, or at our website, baptistepoweryogafayetteville.com. So look for us, uh, ask me questions uh, via those messaging links, and I'd be happy to answer anything. Otherwise, keep coming back to your mat, and you have all the tools you need to uh, work with any of the videos here. So have a great day.